Welcome back, you filthy exiles. All right, so today I'm actually going to record my full build guide for my Spectre Necromancer. Now, um, what I will say is there are definitely some improvements that can be made to this build, um, but I've kept this pretty lean uh, just because of time constraints in my own personal life. And uh, and I wanted to give everyone an easy, easily achievable build, especially for those who have been struggling through the league or may not be as experienced in Path of Exile. Now, the uh, the biggest thing with this build is obviously we're running five Spectres, we're running Redemption Sentries. Uh, I think I did uh, I did post up how to get Redemption Sentries, but they'll basically drop, um, or the the corpse for Redemption Sentries will um, come up in Redeemer maps. Um, there's no guarantee that they will come up, but normally there's a few different ways. Either you can farm Redeemer maps, uh, or where Redeemer um, influence triggers on maps on the Atlas, or you can just type into Global, Global 100 and see if someone is nice enough to give you Redemption Sentries, and then you basically just uh, cast your Spectre, uh, Summit Ray Spectre, and then you'll um, you basically just need to bank that Spectre as you desecrate and you desecrate going forwards. Now, anyway, what makes this build special? Well, you know, we're not pushing 120 mil DPS. We're pushing closer to 8.5 to 8.65 mil DPS. Um, that's obviously, you know, a more affordable and budget option. The other thing is we're not using... I've deliberately left off um, Enchanted Gear from Lab. So there's no special helm. Uh, this, this particular helm, and we'll cover off on this, this Crown of the in Inward Eye is an unloved piece of gear in the game but it's incredibly exceptional we're actually going to be using some different items such as the jinx juju juju we're going to be using profane proxy these things that aren't necessarily used in other spectre builds we're going to apply them here to get a very good outcome for dps um, i'll explain how to craft uh, your legion gloves so you can get a minion damage uh, modifier and the other thing is we are going to use cluster jewels but we're not going to go crazy when my game decides it wants to load we're not going to go crazy and do a triple stack cluster you know coming out of three ends and whatnot we're actually only just going to do the one cluster and the rest of it we're going to melt it into the tree now the other thing is obviously from a survivability standpoint we have no issues with non-maxed cap uh, resistances even though that one is two percent lower than the max cap um, you know, we've got decent armor, uh, we've got f cycling 382 to close to 900 life regeneration per second, so we're sustainable on that front. Uh, movement speed, we have auto-triggered spells, so we are using a convoking wand with a trigger a socketed spell when you use a skill. Um, so, you know, we've got all that going on. Price-wise, you know, we're going to be looking at, in total, and this is playing through the game, farming probably about 8 to 10 exalt. Um, being the most expensive item you're going to have to get is an unending hunger and that was about 3 3.1 exalt of that this build can be played without an unending hunger i'll just add that in so you know you're still going to get great dps even if your minions don't have soul eater it, it, it it's fine um yeah you, you, they'll sustain they'll be fast they'll do shit tons of damage you can do all bosses and whatnot as far as what this boss uh, what this uh what this build can actually do in the game as far as i've played deathless elder deathless shaper deathless cyrus at a6 um there is no corrupted blood immunity on this character either which means you save yourself a shit ton of money uh chaos um yeah, it, it, it's essentially a, a heavily tanky, um, really sustainable, high damage, or reasonably damaging uh, Spectre build. Now, it can delve as well, and I've gotten as far as about 315, you would have seen in the B-roll at the start. It can delve quite efficiently. Um, anyway, let's get into the build, and uh, let's get this show on the road. Okay, so first off the rank is the armor that you're going to use and key uniques. Now, there's only one unique piece of armor on this build and it's the uh, Crown of the Inward Eye. And the reason why we use this is simply because it's going to give us, you know, 18% to 21% increased maximum life, mana and global energy shield. Um, and it gives us, you know, a decent chunk of armor as well. Um, I found this to be really good at creating or making this character much more sustainable. Now you can use a bone helm, a shape bone, uh, a um, 
what is it, an Elder Bone Helm and do a 50x craft on that or whatnot. And completely up to you if you've got the time, the currency, or whatnot. This was just a more affordable option that is that drops when you do low level Cyrus pretty efficiently. So you can do was it A1 Cyrus, um, and this will almost inevitably drop uh, most most times you do that run. Uh, now next to that obviously we're going to be using an, uh, a chess piece with a plus one to spectres roll. Um, your belt is just going to be a Stygian Vise, you're just going to go for life and all resist. Your boots you want to elder influence and get a plus one to all spectre gem roll on that. And as far as your, um, your gloves now you can use, uh, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, there are uh, specific uh, unique gloves that you can use to get a um, get uh, minion buffing. I think it gives you 20% um, at, at physical damage converted to uh, cold damage. Uh, what I actually found is I could achieve a similar result with um, Redeemer Influence gloves, which I got for relatively cheap. Um, I basically just used a Bound Fossil um, and I can't remember the uh, Pristine I believe it's pristine fossils or um, or whatnot to essentially roll a, um, a decent pair of gloves with 25% increased minion damage. Um, now that will only work on a Redeemer influence set of gloves. Anyway, that's pretty much all there is as far as gearing goes on this build. Uh, so let's get on to the next area. Okay, so for your weapon and offhand, you're simply just going to be using a convoking one with a plus one to all minion gems roll. This is in an effort to get to level 25 on spectres so that we can basically get our fifth spectre. Um, the other thing that you can get on this, which you're probably going to want to do pale council so you can get the, uh, the two exalt roll to have multiple crafts, is increased minion damage and minion attack speed. That's going to buff minions up significantly. You'll see in my POB, I haven't done this yet. Um, this is the next thing I'm going to do, um, but this will significantly buff your minion damage up. Even if you get a minimum of 50%, that POB will easily rise over to 2 million DPS and it becomes a 10 million plus build. Um, so that's an improvement that you can make on the build yourself. Now the Victarios Charity, the reason why we use that is predicated around the, um, the ability to generate power and frenzy charges. And when we couple that with Necromatic Aegis, this essentially gives this ability to your minions, which means that your spectres will then be able to accrue three frenzy charges and three power charges as they either hit or kill enemies, which will buff their DPS up incredibly. With re uh, Redemption, Redemption Sentries already being an incredibly powerful spectre minion, this will basically make them gods running around the, um, around the uh, maps and, and bosses that you're fighting. Okay, so the next thing that we're doing is a little bit different as far as our jewelry goes. So we're using a Jinx Juju, which I don't think I've seen on any builds, but basically this allows for 10% of damage on hits uh, taken um, on you to come from your Spectre's life pool. And our Spectres have about 130,000 uh, HP, so they're essentially unkillable. This migrates some of the damage that you'll be taking away from yourself. Now, also given to this, we're going to be using one curse, which we'll talk about in the next item. Um, it increases the effectiveness of your curse. It gives you uh, essentially all attributes, chaos resist, and it increases the uh, effect of non-curse auras as well. It makes this item very good. Now, it's a very cheap and common item, but it's not used in a lot of builds. And that's wrongfully so because it's quite a fantastic item to have. Now, you can go expensive and get the one plus to intelligence um, gems roll on, I believe it's a hunter amulet. Um, that'll increase your spectre level um, and get you to level 26 spectres. Now, I'd argue that that's great. This is somewhat good in the opposite direction of increasing your character sustainability for mapping. So you're going to die less, less if you use this. Now, the other thing that you need to do with this is also do an anoint, which is um, death attunement, and this will give you one plus to your spectres on that. I believe the only um, expensive oil that you'll use there is a silver oil, and that's about 25 to 35 chaos. Now, the other item you're going to use, which I haven't seen on a lot of builds, is profane proxy. Um, this is a relatively newer item in the last few leagues, and it really just goes under the radar, but basically this allows you to change, depending on the socket that you put 
this ring into, in this case, we're going to use it in the right, uh, right ring so slot. Um, it will allow your skitter bot to apply whatever um, cr curse gem that you put into that you socket into the ring um, is. So in this case, we're using projectile weakness, which our redemption sentries use projectiles. So our skitter bot is going to run around and apply that debuff or curse to enemies as you know you're running around maps. It's going to exponentially increase your damage output to crazy levels. Um, it's incredibly effective. Not only does this ring do that, it gives you a decent chunk of cold resist, decent chunk of lightning resist, um, and it also adds plus three to that curse gem as well. So as an overall, it's an incredibly powerful ring to use if you know how you're using it, uh, how to use it, and you're using skitter bots, which is exactly what we're doing in this build. Your other ring, you're just going to be targeting any other um, elemental resist and life attributes and any other attributes that you want to apply, and maybe some minion movement speed that you can craft off the bench on there and whatnot as well. Okay, so the uh, the three key unique jewels that we're going to use, um, one will be a th medium thread of hope, that's about 20 chaos, that will just allow us to get Ravenous Horde. Uh, we're going to use Katava's Teachings, that's going to allow us to get the, uh, whoa, I can't remember what it's called, I'll just look at the tree. Uh, that allows us to get uh, Disciple of Katava, which means that every second we consume nearby corpses, which recovers 5% of our life and mana. So that basically makes us a lot more sustainable when mapping and even when bossing, when our Desecrate pings off our, um, off our com Convoking Wand, um, you'll consume those corpses and that will keep you sustaining. You can essentially self-sustain if you run Desecrate. Now, the other one that is going to cost you a little bit is going to be the uh, the Unending Hunger. And the reason why we get Unending Hunger, and the reason why... You, and this build can operate without it pretty autonomously, is simply because it gives your minions Soul Eater. Uh, and Soul Eater means that your minions will progressively get increased attack and cast speed as they attack and kill enemies. Uh, and there's a 50% chance of proccing that on the death of enemies. Now, this gem doesn't help you in boss fights, but it's fantastic for mapping. Um, for cluster jewels, I won't go into detail in cluster jewels. I'll let you look at the POB. But essentially, you're going to be running a large cluster jewel, which is going to give you Vengeful Commander, Widespread Destruction, and, uh, and any other elemental modifier. I think as Overshock is also a good one to use. Um, and then from there, you're going to use two medium cluster jewels attached to that large cluster jewel. Uh, and you're going to get Renewal and Feasting Fiends on both of those. And then we're going to run one Surging Vitality uh, jewel. But I'll let you look at those in the POB. So flask-wise, really basic stuff. We're just going to be using a Quicksilver, a Granite, um, and we're going to be running a Blood of the Karui. These are the three key flasks. You can use whatever flasks in between these that help pad out your damage mitigation, whether you want to use something to give you phasing, which I use for, um, for delving. Um, the other thing is you want to try and roll these with uh, plus one charge when you get hit by an enemy, and that's going to create more of a sustainable flask environment for you. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for flasks. Okay, so basically for skill setups, um, we're going to be using in our helms uh, Carrion Golem that's going to buff your minions up, Ray Zombie, Feeding Frenzy and Elemental Army. We want to use Feeding Frenzy on Ray Zombie because that will apply that buff to all minions, which increases their attack speed. In our chest, we want to use a level 21 Corrupted Ray Spectre, and this is to try and raise our Spectre gem level very quickly. Vicious projectiles, greater multiple projectiles. Now for bossing, you'll switch out greater multiple projectiles for hypothermia. That's going to increase uh, the DPS up to the max cap of, I think it's 1.72 plus million per spectre. You're going to use minion damage and elemental damage to attacks with death mark and death marks going to let you target. Now, boots, you're just going to use cast one damage taken or mortal call phase run and convocation. You can scale that level to whatever your needs may be. In your weapon, which is your convoking wand, you're going to have cast triggered, uh, cast triggered spell on on skill use. Um, you're going to have to get that on your crafting bench or buy that. Unfortunately, um, now there you want to use desecrate phase run and flesh offering because of our ascendancy. Flesh offering will apply to your character, so that means that you'll move faster um, yourself. Obviously, desecrate uh, will allow flesh offering to auto proc on itself, and I like phase run because that increases movement speed and sustainability in mapping. 
Now, shield, you're going to run Armageddon Brand, fla um, Flame Dash, and Faster Casting. Now, uh, the reason why we're going to run Armageddon Brand, and then essentially when we use our death mark, we're going to proc uh, and tag Armageddon Brand onto our enemies, is because we're using Elemental Equilibrium. So when the fire damage hits the enemy, it's going to give them 25% increased uh, resistance to that element, but then negative 50% uh, resistance to our ice damage from our redemption sentries, which is going to increase our damage ridiculously. Um, now, on top of that, faster car casting is key for flame dash, and the reason for that is that is more of a dodge mechanic than what evasion will be if you were to use something like Val Grace or whatnot. You're better off being able to navigate and physically dodge attacks as opposed to trying to chance or evasion because more than often you're going to die. And I found this pretty prevalent in um, Cyrus fights. Faster casting was critical in me dodging his beams and, and moving um, pretty seamlessly. Now, on our gloves, we're going to be using Summon Skitterbots, Generosity, Bone Chill, and Hatred. Bone Chill will apply to our Skitterbots. Um, and Hatred, obviously, we're going to be buffing that up where possible. Generosity will buff that, um, that uh, aura off to your minions and increase damage further. So really quick pros and cons of this build. Can farm T6 really easily actually, T16 really easily. Uh, it's pretty tanky. Um, you can take some big hits. Uh, you get about 6k EHP. Um, it's relatively safe for bossing. Kills bosses really easily. Does wipe entire screens which is fun. Now the, the negative side is if you don't like minion builds, well this build's not for you but yeah, let's be real, like what, 20% of the league are playing Necromancers. Necromancers have been OP every fucking league and Spectres are pretty much the easiest way to carry Cyrus and, uh, and make some sick currency in the process. Okay, so tree-wise. Now, after people flaming me for not using Community Fork, I have finally started using Community Fork. So thank you for that feedback in the comments. I do appreciate it. Um, now... This is pretty, I'll basically do a quick walkthrough on how we're going to basically run our tree. So, alright, so starting from the witch node here, this is our starting zone, we're going to move up. And we're, when we're first leveling up, we want to basically target getting, um, we're going to take death attunement, but we're going to wind this back later down the track. So basically we want to work up to these cruel preparation nodes and this uh, node up here. Uh, dual socket node up here. So this is going to be the first path thing you're going to follow. We're going to grab Lord of Dead. We're going to grab Arcanist Dominion and whatnot. From there, we're going to build up the other side of the tree and get to our cluster jewel nodes. So we're going to go to the left from this node here, pick up Grave Intentions. We want to come down, grab Melding. We want to grab all of the, these nodes here. We want to come and grab Aligned Spirits and then we want to grab Necromatic Ages. Um, now, this will allow us to buff all our minions with our Victario's Charity and allow them to generate Frenzy and Power Charges. Without this, it won't work. Um, and it's going to significantly hinder your DPS. Uh, from there, we're going to come across. We're going to pick up uh, Written in Blood and these ES and Life nodes. And then we're going to come up and we're going to get our Jewel uh, socket here to allow us to Cluster Jewel. Now, the Cluster Jewels, quickly, that I'm using here... Um, these are obviously, uh, you know, this one's about 60 to 70 chaos, um, and this is going to give us Vengeful Commander as key in this scenario. Uh, it gives your it gives you a 30% increase increased aura buff to hatred, which is significant for Redemption Sentries because they output cold damage. Now the other thing is obviously using widespread destruction, and if you can get it overshock as well, if you can apply lightning damage. Now the other thing is this is going to have two. Um, two uh, passive jewel sockets that you can apply um, and you're basically going to get two identical jewel uh, medium cluster jewels which are both four total passives and you're going to get renewal and feasting fiends renewal is going to give your minions one percent life regeneration and ten percent chance to deal damage double damage and then your feasting fiends is going to increase your damage um, minion damage leeches life this is basically creating a sustainability loop for your specters and makes them pretty much unkillable they can face tank and you would have seen in the b-roll they can face tank shaper hits they can face tank cyrus they can face tank cyrus portals they can face tank 
anything. They can face tank, face tanking, for fuck's sake. They're ridiculous. If we have a look at their life leech, they've got 14k life leech, 146,000 life, and 14,703 um, energy shield with 4,400 life regeneration. So if only you could build characters themselves this powerful, you probably can. But, you know, these minions are, for the better word of it, unkillable. Um, now, you're going to then socket uh, Katava's teachings. This is going to give you Dis Disciple of Katava. This is about 30 chaos. This gem here is about 50 chaos. Um, this gem here, so two of these are 50 chaos each, give or take. Um, they can go up to 60, 65. They're relatively cheap. Uh, you can farm them. It's just a little bit of a process. Obviously, I haven't finished this yet because I haven't had as much time as what I've had in previous leagues to play this league. Um, but we're getting there. Now, in your other cluster jewel that you're going to apply in the second socket here, you're going to put a Surging Vitality. This is going to give you 8% maximum life. It's all going to, also going to give you 10% life regeneration every 5 seconds over 1 second, which is how we cycle between 400 life regeneration up to 900 life regeneration constantly. Now, coming back to the tree, obviously, um, you know, when you get to endgame, you're going to use your Thread of Hope up here, um, uh, your Medium Thread of Hope. You're going to pick up your Cruel Preparations, and you're going to pick up your Ravenous Horde. This is going to buff your minions, make them faster, make them do more fuck-off damage. Um, this is going to make you more sustainable and give you some more all elemental resist, which is what we need to max cap. So then we're going to move across to the left. And we're going to come down, pick up Quick Recovery, pick up this dual socket here. We're going to socket Unending Hunger here, and we're going to pick up Elemental Equilibrium. Uh, from there, we're going to come down. We're going to pick up Sacrifice. We're going to pick up Spiritual Command. Uh, this is going to buff your minions up and their survivability. Um, and then we're going to come down, get Retribution, uh, get uh, Discipline and Training. This is going to buff our life up. We're going to come down, down, down. We're going to get Grave Pact. This is again going to buff our minions and give you 4% chance to do double damage, um, which is fantastic. Then we'll come down and we're going to go to the right um, and we're going to start picking up these life nodes down in the large life node cluster. Uh, then you'll come to the left, pick up Combat Stamina. This is going to give you more life regeneration and start buffing up your armor. And then you're going to come down and you're going to get Heart of the Warrior and Warrior's Blood. This is going to increase, increase life regen, strength, and it's also going to increase maximum life to get you over that 5,000 minimum that you need for endgame. Now, I have picked up uh, Dex nodes here as well. The reason why is because of things like Desecrate and using, um, you know, uh, for projectile weakness and whatnot we need more decks and that's one of the limitations that i ran into in this build was decks but you know you can get around that with crafting appropriately now the other thing that you're going to do is for your ascendancies the basically the sequence is going to be uh going straight to mindless aggression is the first one you're going to take you're then going to get unnatural strength this is going to give you plus two to all minion gems um, and then you're going to go Commander of Darkness, and the final one that you're going to go, and this is going to buff your minions, give you 30% um, elemental resist, and this is how we're going to sustain endgame very easily. Um, and then we're going to get Mistress of Sacrifice, and this goes party and parcel to using your, um, your offering skills. So this is how we get our offering to affect us. So when our offering pops, when we do our Flame Dash, um, that means that our speed will increase with our minion speed and this gives us increased map sustainability and movement and map clear ability. Um, but essentially this is critical for this build and you will need it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the tree. This will be in the POB. If you've got any questions, post it in the comments and I'll address it where possible. I think I've min and maxed the shit out of this. There's as minimal travel distances between nodes as possible for the maximum impact. Now, there are other alternatives. You can put more cluster jewels in here and then in here which is obviously what I started to do and then I basically went, no, nah, I didn't like it and it wasn't as sustainable, so I wound it back and I also made it easier to build around uh, on a budget too. So this is relatively cheap, this tree to kit out. The only real expensive part is Unending Hunger and that'll set you back 3S, 3x. The rest can all be progressively leveled up and rolled and whatnot. Um, so, you know, this won't take too long to set up the way that this is set up in the POB. Um, should be straightforward. Anyway, 
um, that's pretty much it for this. So yeah, uh, that's the build tree. Okay, so that's pretty much the build guide in a nutshell. The last thing is obviously the Pantheon, which I've missed out on other build guides. So this uses Solar Lunaris, um, and I use Solar Shakar for dot damage um, resistances or reduced damage from dot. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much the build. Um, I know people have been waiting for this. I know I've taken a little longer than usual to put out this build. It's taken me more. I've played like eight different characters this league and this was the best character I could come up with um, at this stage. Now, this is really geared towards beginners. It's really geared towards people who haven't got as much time. Um, I understand that there's other guys running Spectre builds and they do crazy amounts of ridiculous damage. But, you know, we're talking the difference of having, you know, 10 or 12 hours a week to play POE versus 100 hours a week to play POE. So, you know, this is more geared towards us plebs that don't play hardcore streamer level. Um, anyway, you can flame me in the comments for that. But, you know, uh, this is the way that I like my builds to come out because I want it to be achievable and I want to help people get into the game and understand the game as best I can or as best they can. Um, now, if you have questions about this build, as always, put it in the comments. I'll try and address it as soon as I possibly can. I do work full time, so I, um, I try and check it as much as I can. Unfortunately, if I'm delayed, my apologies. Um, I will get to responding to queries. Um, and yeah, there'll be a POB in the description. Um, the other thing I'd like to say is the channel hit 4,000 subs um, a couple, about a week or two ago. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who supports the channel. I really appreciate it. I never thought that I would get anywhere on YouTube um, and I thought I would still be posting videos that get less than 10 views and things like that. So even a video that gets 100 views is absolutely phenomenal in my, in, in, in my situation. So I'd like to thank everyone who clicks on the videos and enjoys me talking shit and, uh, and, and whatnot. I am going to try and put out more content in the next... Uh, few months and definitely when poe 2 it 2 comes out and whatnot i will be definitely banging out the content as as that shit rolls out but again thanks to everyone who supports the channel um if you watch my videos and don't sub or whatnot and you think you you know the videos are, are decent you like them definitely put a sub down i'd say definitely sub um, I don't do this for any profit or anything like that and I never want to be that sort of uh, content creator but I do enjoy having you know uh, see, seeing people enjoying the content and it also helps me drive um, and figure out what to actually upload and and what people want to see because um, I like to post videos I would like to watch myself um, basically um, so yeah anyway thanks to everyone that that supports um, the channel and uh, and yeah I'll, I will keep trying my best to simplify down Path of Exile wherever possible to make this game easier and more approachable for everyone um, as compared to you know it has been in the past um, anyway uh, like and sub if you think this video is okay and you know Spectres is your thing Spectres not your thing you know dislike me to shit um, and yeah until next time bye